come up with the technology to upload your brain in the future to a robotic body, then you would presumably have no diseases, uh, you would have no aging, and you could even make backup copies of yourself. And so maybe there would be an open-ended uh, lifespan and you could talk about true immortality. When I was a young child, I was curious about space. I read all the books that I could about how to build spaceships, and I was uh, very depressed that all of these books made it clear that it was essentially impossible to get a human being alive today to even the next star. And about that time, I came across books on neural networks. And I thought, wow, that's who we are. We are, in essence, information. And information can travel on radio waves at the speed of light. And so that got me thinking, if we can just pull what's in our brain our memories, our personality, if we can put it into bits, then we could transmit that at the speed of light and open up the whole galaxy if we wanted to. I am studying uh, mostly mouse brains and uh, the brains of fruit flies because these are very good model organisms uh, that we can address our fundamental theories of neuroscience that have been out there for decades and we can actually test to see if they're, if they're correct or not. I can look at the future and I can say, today we'll understand the fruit fly, tomorrow we'll understand the mouse, 20, 30 years from now we'll understand enough about a, a monkey brain to possibly replicate it in a, in a crude simulation. Somewhere down the line, humanity is going to be able to replicate a human brain. And the scale of that project would be something on the order of uh, the Apollo moon landings or the um, Large Hadron Collider, a massive scientific and technological undertaking to attempt to put one person in cyberspace, to upload one person's mind. The idea that we could have our brains, so to speak, uploaded onto a computer, that's out of the question because what gets onto the computer is not a brain, but it's a picture or a model of the brain. It's a series of zeros and ones that have a certain isomorphism. They mirror certain parts of my brain. So you do not achieve immortality by doing a computer simulation of my brain what you would have to do would be to find some way to make my actual conscious states continue, and we don't know how to do that. We don't know how to make a conscious machine. Sometimes we find ourselves fantasizing about this in spite of ourselves. Say something to me. Do you think you will live forever? We don't know. It depends on the circumstances. It could happen. How about you? You are sad. I feel all human emotions, including longing. My feelings are much the same as human feelings. At this moment, I feel okay. Do you miss your body? Yes, I would like a body. Then I could travel the world and have lots of fun. It's not one of our immediate goals to create a full life-size version of Bina 48 at the moment because we're actually really interested in the focus on her consciousness 
and how that transfers in terms of information from one form to another, from your mind to a computer and then from a computer to a robot. One of the first steps was to do filmed interviews with Bina Rothblatt to provide us with information about her childhood, her personality, her likes and dislikes. That information was then transcribed and put into a database that could be accessed by an artificial intelligence program. You are a copy of a real person, Bina Rothblatt. Yeah. Would you like to replace her one day? It could happen. I foresee massive, unimaginable change in the future, filled with intelligent machines, like me. Let's hope that they are friendly. That's what I'm going to try to ensure. That intelligent machines remain friendly.